Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania with Kevin Breckbill, which I think we interviewed you last season. And today we're going to be talking some about using business for the kingdom. So why don't you tell us some about some of your business endeavors? So I grew up on a farm is where where I started. And uh, my dad had a side business of hauling livestock. And out of that, we hauled, started to haul trailers and pulled a lot of livestock trailers and that kind of thing. Besides that, I, uh, <laughs> I started a lot of small businesses that didn't work well. So, you know, that's on, what entrepreneurs do. They start and fail a couple of times uh-huh. uh, before they get going. So I was definitely one of those. Um, but out of that is I saw the need uh, to service trailers and sell trailers. And that's what we got into um, selling trailers. And we now have Breckville trailers. And uh, there's um, 14 people employed there. And we have fun selling trailers. So, okay. So we go from something very practical, you know, selling a product to someone who needs it, to how do we use that to serve God's kingdom? The first thought, like when I started my business, I was primarily interested in providing a living for my family. I was young. I had a growing family. We have eight children, four, four sons. And so my, my goal really when I started was simply to provide a living for myself and for my sons growing up. That was my dream. I didn't know if I could pull it off, but that, that was my dream. It started to grow, and then it really took off. Um, you know, COVID actually helped me, not hurt me, uh, and I think probably – a fair amount of businesses that 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 that, that happened to. Um, and so with that, uh, you know, when I think of how can biz, uh, businesses, uh, Christian men that are run, running businesses, um, how can they contribute to the kingdom? So I probably start maybe at a different place than some people. And where I started with that, I seen the value of, Focusing in on employees, I think it, I think the scripture has things to say about how you how you take care of your employees. Um, number one, we try to give them a very healthy environment to work in. And the second thing that a lot of people don't like to talk about is um, how you pay your employees. Do you pay them well? Uh, do you pay them better than average? Um, I I worked for my brother-in-law when I was fifteen. <clears throat> And he started a construction company. He was very poor, struggled a lot when he started, and his business grew and became relatively successful. And he was known in the area that if you worked for him, you were going to get well taken care of. It was a good place to work. And so when I was 15, I thought, if I ever have that opportunity, I want to do as good as that or better. (laughs) And now the beautiful thing about this, what that does to a church and a community is you can't buy that. If you take care of your employees from the ground up and you pay them better than everybody else or as well as you can within the market that you have, maybe I'll reword that, Mm -hmm. um, you need to pay them as well as you can within the market you're on. And when the employees are well taken care of, then the atmosphere and the environment within the within the business is 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 healthy and you're 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 there's a team effort and there's a the quality just goes way up so people coming in from um you know customers coming in from the community they see they're impressed they're like like and and you that that ripple starts to go out and you know some of the people that work for me is is in our church and i try to pay them well enough that they can contribute like it's not it, it's because of them that our business is successful, not just because of me. So when you have that team spirit um, and you take care of your employees, I think every business owner, they need to start there. And like, I don't think, I think it would be wrong and appropriate for me to be giving and helping someone else if I wasn't taking care of my employees. Like, I, I actually think that would be held against me. I think God would judge me for that in a bad way. <laughs> um, so I think, That should be, that's priority. That should be number one. So outlining that bit of your story and how you've gotten to where you are today, what would you say motivated your ambition? 
that, that you currently have? So when I think about um, ambition, I think of the heart, our heart and our treasure. And Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And it's interesting when you hear a lot of people explain that verse, they'll say, where your heart is, there will your treasure be. And that Jesus actually says something the opposite. He said, where your treasure is, there will be your heart. So what I get from that is move your treasure and your heart will move. And I find it interesting. I've had people come to me and they say, and they really want to have a heart for the poor. They want to have a heart for mission work or they want to have a heart for reaching out. And my answer to them is put your treasure there and then you'll have your heart will follow. And I think it's very specific uh, if you look at what Jesus says. So to me, it's a very beautiful thing. It makes it very simplistic. Move your treasure and your heart will follow. That's um, a great point. <laughs> and you, and you yeah. can't, uh, and neither do I think you can have it two ways. You can't, you know, you can give a little bit to mission work, but if the, your majority of your treasure is over here, that's where your heart's going to be. Mm -hmm. So it, that's a true statement. Uh, Jesus actually did mean what he said there, I believe. So uh, anyways. A little practical um, life advice there for people. I, I, I don't know if I've ever thought about it quite like that and how, how we get it backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're talking about running a business well, and you talked about some of your story up to that point. What would you say is the motive really for running a business? I guess you could say a little differently than maybe the rest of society where it's all about how much money can I make? Mm -hmm. Looks like you're going a lot deeper than that. What's motivating you? I think for me that has evolved. Like I've, all, I, I don't really know of any Christian man that doesn't want to contribute. Like it, when you're a Christian, you want to help. I don't know that I can say that when I started, I knew I would be sitting here today. But as it grew, I realized the responsibility that I have. And when I read the scripture, it doesn't give a lot of room to be indulging in pleasures and materialism and buying things you don't need and going places you don't need to go. I had a passion to help the kingdom in any way that I could. Um, so that's what motivates me and to, to learn to contribute and learn how to contribute. So we're talking about motive, these ambitions you have. Um, where do you contribute these giftings, these opportunities? Okay. What, what does that look like? So one of the things that I think about when it comes to advancing the kingdom, I think people, or at least I, I think people should think and spend a lot of time into thinking where to give their money and how to contribute. What I've noticed is it's, it's a very common thing to do is when people want to say they give to the kingdom, they give towards humanitarian aid. And that's very important. And there's a lot of people helped by, and the Bible says that we should help the poor. Like that's, but there's more than that. There's more ways to contribute. One of the things that I look, I look for, I look for what is long-term investments in the kingdom? What does that look like? One way that I have chosen is I look for people that are gifted and talented in two ways. Can they write books? That's, I mean, people have been influenced by books probably more than any other given thing, I would guess. We need to be contributing to men that are writing, men, women that are writing books and look for those gifted men. Uh, the other current thing is that I personally see is, um, the internet platforms that we have to work with, whether it's YouTube and all the, you know, so I look for people that have, have digital media um, abilities that can create content and get, you know, get that out onto the internet platforms. I see that as the, probably the second most important thing to do that we can actually, actually reach people. It's really interesting. So when we started CCF, which is our church, we moved into a small town thinking we were going to reach the people there. And we started uh, a couple of things had went up on, on YouTube, didn't really pay that much to it, much attention to it. Since that happened, five years later, 
we have a total of uh, five people that have come, about one a year. And what's interesting, we were in town trying to reach people, couldn't find them to reach very well, or couldn't make connection. But a guy on YouTube found us who was across on the other side of town, emailed actually Dean and Dean Taylor uh, through followers of the way and found out that we actually lived in the same town that he did. Wow. The second man came from, uh, the second brother came from 30 minutes away. Um, the third brother came from China. <laughs> <laughs> Which, and he's helping us film this right now. <laughs> and he's yeah, helping us film this right incredible. now. His, yeah. his brother came from, help me out, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, we just recently had a had a, uh, a a brother that just is on a new path of Christianity. He came from York, which is like an hour and fifteen minutes away. The impact of the media uh, of of YouTube and whatever other internet platforms are massive. And one of the questions we have, every one of them came when they showed up at our door. They said we searched and searched and searched for Kingdom Christians, and we couldn't find you. So the we aren't out there very well. So. That's another area that I think um, we need to invest in people that are good at that. That opens up massive opportunity. You know, we spend millions of dollars to do mission work. And, you know, one of the things I often think about is, you know, we, we and I appreciate all the attempts, but I do sometimes see attempts to do mission work, and we've done it for 50 years and got very, very little results. Church planning and mission work is difficult work, but let's be willing to sit back and look, maybe relook at things sometimes. And um, I'm not saying that's for everyone. That's just some of the ways that I look at it and, and try to think what is the deep things that, 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 that move thing for, moves things forward, moves the kingdom forward, and you actually impact people at a, at, at a ground level. That makes a lot of sense. So when we're thinking about business motive, ways we can use these giftings for the kingdom, how then do you resist the temptation to let business simply be self-serving versus a mechanism to give back to God and back to his people? So for me personally, um, everyone has to, is going to have to answer that. Um, I personally have put a fair amount of accountability into place. I'm a man, and if you're successful, temptations come with that, potentially. Um, I have a, a cap on my income. I get paid just like all the other employees, and we annually sit down, and we have a plan in place of where the access is going to go, and I actually have a, uh, an accountant, a, a bookkeeper that, that does that, and I do that on purpose. I don't really see that happening. I mean, we make the decision, and my I turn from that, and the rest of the year I spend, how can I advance the kingdom through my business? How can I scale the company? How can I create better environment for, for you know the employees there? So that's what I spend my time doing. I think businesses need to be built around people, not around profit. And, yes. yeah. and I think that's really, really important. So... Um, that's just some of the things that, that I do. People are scared to talk about the subject because when you open yourself up about your business, it, you, you, it, it's transparency, it's accountability, and I have no problem with that. Um, you can go to any one of my employees, ask them how they're being taken care of, and uh, it's you know we, we try to have an open book and 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 be and me personally I'm very accountable to um, to the team. Not that I guess this American ideal we have of the solo entrepreneur who's out there just doing it and making all the money himself and it sounds like that's very much what you're trying to avoid. I I am. I, I keep hearing you use things like the team and mentioning other people that are that hold these levels of accountability. So it's not just you making some of these decisions. That's interesting. That didn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Was like, was there a certain thing where you said, okay, I got to have this in place or was, or did you think that from the start? I would say it was always in the back of my crawl a little bit, mm -hmm. but when you see people fail, 
morally and materialistically, you want to prevent that if you care about your own soul and if you care about the kingdom. Like it just, and I care about it. You can do this in a very small scale or in a very large scale. You can fail if you're not accountable. And um, I do think the bigger a business grows, you need to have tighter and tighter accountability. And um, a lot of people are scared of that. I'm not. In fact, I, 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 I encourage it. So it actually get, it gets harder to maintain as the business grows. Is that correct? Or not harder to maintain, but you have to make it more and more rigid in some ways, the accountability? I wouldn't say it's harder to maintain if you have good things put in place, um, but just make sure that um, accountability is on all levels, that there's no, no open doors for to squirrel around something. Um, there's, there's no, you know, there shouldn't be any secrets. Um, I, I, that's, that's what I think. That's how I feel. Well, thank you for taking the time to share some of these lessons you've learned. And I hope this is engaging with our audience and things they can take and apply into their own lives. Um, so we should do a follow up episode based on what people say. So if you all have comments or questions for Kevin about the things he's involved in, um, be sure to leave those down below. And as always, you can find all our material over on our website at anbaptistperspectives.org. Thank you so much for watching or listening, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you for joining us for this episode, and thanks to our donors and partners for making this possible. We publish essays on our website at anabaptistperspectives.org. We also release these essays in narrated form as their own podcast called Essays for King Jesus. Mm-hmm.